Howdy clowny pals, Tizzy Top here. It's April 1st, or at least it should be if I can get this video edited on time. And that means one thing! Well, it actually means several things, but it's April Fool's Day, which is every clown's birthday. A joyous celebration of the silly, the goofy, and the absurd. Or is it? In this video, I wanted to explore the history and cultural impact of April Fool's Day. Why is it celebrated? Why on April 1st? And what is the actual impact of the pranks that are pulled? But maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. In simple terms, what is April Fool's Day? Every year on the 1st of April, many places around the world celebrate April Fool's Day, a holiday where it is customary to play pranks on your friends and family and exclaim April Fools, or some variation upon that. In Germany, they say April April, whereas in France, people call out Poisson d'Avril, which means April fish? Huh. While the holiday is mainly celebrated in Western Europe and North America, it is also observed in several other parts of the world, many of which have their own unique traditions surrounding the day, which we will go into later in this video. April Fool's Day has been heavily featured in a number of pieces of pop culture, perhaps most notably for some of you, the season one episode of SpongeBob SquarePants, Fools in April. April Fools! Oh. <laughs> Now we're on the same page, I bet you're wondering, when did this all come about? Now the origins of April Fool's Day are actually quite straightforward. April Fool's. <laughs> huh. So we don't actually know the origins of April Fool's Day? It's kind of a mystery. <gasps> but there are some theories, and since there's no 100% known answer, I figured we'd go over a couple of those and hope that nobody notices that I have no idea what I'm doing. One origin of the day suggests it comes from the Canterbury Tales, a series of 24 short stories written by Geoffrey Chaucer and published after his death in 1400. In the story The Nun's Priest's Tale, a cockerel was fooled by a cunning fox 32 days after March began. Well, more specifically, since March began full 30 days and two. Yes, we actually spoke like this back then. April Fools! That's just the modern translation. Here's what it actually looked like when it was originally written. It's no wonder that medieval peasants were illiterate. Another possible origin comes from France, the funniest country, in 1582 when they switched from the Julian calendar, which began its year on March 25th, to our current Gregorian calendar, which, as we know, starts on the 1st of January. The idea is that because news travelled so slowly back in those days, the many people didn't even know that the calendars had even changed, and so they just still celebrated New Year's in late March, leading to people who were in the know to make fun of them. A fun, kind of silly theory posits that the holiday stemmed from the Dutch victory over the Spanish in 1572 during the Eighty Years' War. The battle, known as the Capture of Briel, saw the defeat of Duke Fernando Alvarez, or Alva for short. Following the victory, a common saying came about in the Netherlands, Op 1 April, verloor Alva geen bril, which means, on the 1st of April, Alva lost his glasses. See, the joke is that the Dutch word bril means glasses, but it also sounds exactly like the name of the place that was captured in the battle. A very humorous homonym, I'm sure you'll agree. <laughs> but that's all I've really got on the origins of the holiday. There are some smaller theories out there, but those were the main ones. We know that April Fool's Day is celebrated around the world, but how? We've discussed the traditional European and American way, but there's a big world out there and they all have their own quirks and twists to this goofy holiday, as well as their own names for it. In Ukraine, the day is known as Humorna and seems to be mainly celebrated in the city of Odessa. The festival is marked by a large parade of clowns, mimes and singers. People yell out, Prievria Aprilia, Nikamunya Verio, which means, the 1st of April, I don't trust anybody. A statement that will become very relevant later on. On the subject, in Brazil, the day is called Dia das Mangiras, or the Day of Lies. Again, relevant later. 
The day actually got that name from a particular prank wherein a newspaper had printed a story that the Brazilian emperor was dead, despite the fact that he was not. I think that's a crime. April Fool's Day made its way to China through influence from Hong Kong as well as foreign teachers working on the mainland. The day is known as Yuanji, or the Foolish Man Festival. <laughs> Haven't we all experienced a foolish man festival on the internet from time to time? <laughs> In Iran, the day is called Sista Bedal, which roughly means getting rid of 13, and is celebrated with outdoor picnics and practical jokes. One thing I noticed while researching all these traditions is that there's a few countries that oddly connect the day with fish. Mainly with the act of taping a paper fish to someone's back without them knowing. Turns out this dates back to the French origin that I mentioned earlier with Poisson d'Avril. Well, right, smart me. I can say words. But April Fool's pranks extend further than the personal level. For decades now, companies have been getting involved with the festivities, and some have even ended up creating their own traditions. So here are a few of my favourite large-scale April Fool's pranks. In 1957, the BBC aired an episode of Panorama featuring a story on the Swiss spaghetti trees. The footage showed a family of spaghetti farmers harvesting their crop early due to a mild winter and early spring. This prank was so convincing that the BBC had, and I quote, a large number of people call the studio asking how they can grow their own spaghetti and where to get seeds from. Now I know what you're thinking. How did anybody fall for this? Spaghetti doesn't grow on trees. Unless it does. No, it doesn't. What you need to keep in mind is that this was 1957. Food rationing from World War II only ended three years prior to this. Italian cuisine just wasn't very common in the UK at that point. Keeping with the BBC, in 2008 they produced this elaborate and honestly pretty convincing video detailing the supposed discovery of flying penguins in Antarctica. Overseas in the Americas in 1996, fast food restaurant chain Taco Bell announced that they had purchased the historical artifact known as the Liberty Bell, an important icon of American independence, and was planning to rename it the Taco Liberty Bell. Needless to say, outrage followed in the America fandom, but quickly settled once it was revealed to simply be an April Fool's prank. In 1975, Australian news show This Day Tonight aired a story about how the country would soon be swapping over to metric time, with minutes now being 100 seconds, hours being 100 minutes, and days being 20 hours long, and with the added bonus of seconds, minutes, and hours being renamed Miller Days, Centre Days, and Decer Days, respectively. In 2009, the Swiss Tourism Board answered the question, how do you keep those Alps so clean? The answer was apparently a crack team of mountain cleaners who would jump into action as soon as a mess was detected. The video claimed that the organisation, known as the Felsenputzer Mountain Cleaning Volunteers, had a duty to scrub the mountain rocks clean of bird droppings to not only keep them presentable, but also stave off the effects of erosion on the mountains. While the video is funny, it did also raise a lot of people's interest in protecting the Alps, and a real-world version of the Felsenputzers came about later that year following intense interest from the general public. In 2014, Google partnered with the Pokemon Company to produce an ad for a supposed Pokemon Google Earth feature, which it claimed would allow users to travel the world and catch Pokemon. If this sounds at all familiar, it's because two years later it became Pokemon Go. Well, that reminds me, the world of video games is absolutely rife with April Fool's Japery. Well, here's just a sample. Following the release of The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, fans of the game quickly noticed that Geraldo's horse, Roach, was a bit glitchy. In response, the developers, CD Projekt Red, released a behind-the-scenes video revealing that Roach was, apparently, mo-capped by two of the game's developers in a makeshift horse costume. 
Landfall Games, the Swedish developers behind the amazing Totally Accurate Battle Simulator, have released several April Fool's gags throughout the years, such as a zombie survival game, Totally Accurate Battle Zombulator, a parody of the Battle Royale genre, Totally Accurate Battlegrounds, and even a special mode in tabs which adds bugs and glitches that you can play with. In 2016, Walking Dead developers Telltale Games announced that their next project would be an episodic adaptation of Five Nights at Freddy's, only to later reveal that it was just an April Fool's joke. The funny thing is, despite the fact that the game never actually happened, Telltale still managed to lay off the entire development team halfway through the project. Back in the dusty days of ye olde YouTube, meaning 2008, IGN uploaded a completely fake trailer for a supposed Legend of Zelda movie. Rewatching this in 2024, it's kinda hard to think that so many of us actually fell for this. It's giving... we have Lord of the Rings at home. In 2018, Sega and Sonic the Hedgehog brought out an actual line of products featuring poorly drawn meme goblin Sanic. And this wasn't just a funny image with a link that sent you to a Rick Roll, this was an actual line of official merchandise that you could buy. Minecraft famously introduces an April Fool's update almost every year, with the first instalment in 2011 parodying the crate system from a game called Team Fortress 2, which was a very popular game at the time. Other notable Minecraft April Fool's pranks include 2013's update, which added overfeeding, a super hostile mode, and tinted glass. Now that last one is just ludicrous. In 2018, the game received new and... crunchy looking textures. 2019 saw the arrival of Minecraft 3D, a parody of early 90s shareware games like Doom. And in 2021, they released a version of the game with a multitude of crazy new dimensions available to explore. Such as the Sponge Dimension, or the Bridges Dimension. And yet, still no ether. One day. But that brings me to the serious part of this video. Don't worry, nobody's exploded. The impact of April Fool's Day is something that really ought to be discussed, and I felt kind of wrong only giving you my viewpoint, so for this video, I reached out to the internet and asked for their opinions. And it didn't go as badly as you might think. I asked people a simple question. What do you think of April Fool's Day? I understand it's meant to be positive, but I kind of have a hard time with it. It's not so prevalent out in the real world, thankfully, but the internet is already confusing enough without any extra fake stuff or misinformation. It makes it even harder to discern what is real and or otherwise comfortable, even in my usual go-to comfy slash happy places. It kind of messes with my sense of consistency slash reality, a trauma trigger for me. So it gets to my anxiety. I personally dislike it. I particularly hate it in the real world where people think they can get away with stuff. I'm here asking an honest question or having a serious time and some jerk is out there messing around. I only enjoy it when it's cleverly done through text in a situation that I'm not actually invested in an answer or topic. So an interesting point that these folks made was that April Fool's Day for them can be quite stressful. Not being able to trust everything you see online, not to mention that things can happen offline as well. And while there's plenty of people who don't dislike satire and jokes and the occasional light-hearted trolling, the fact that you can't escape it on this one day and you have no idea where it's coming from can be quite frustrating for some people. Others have expressed to me that they had bad experiences with the holiday and thus associate anything to do with it with those difficult memories. The April Fool's Day episode of Spongebob just made me think of how anxious I got going to school on April 1st because I was one of the most picked on. I got stuff like, you're looking thinner today, April Fools! The theme of bullying unfortunately continues in this impassioned response. Bullying April Fools jokes on autistic people is a hate crime. It's pretty wild that April Fools is on the first day of Autism Acceptance Month. Oh, let's kick off a month dedicated to people who tend to take things at face value with a day dedicated to making fun of people who take things at face value. While I don't necessarily share all of the same feelings as these responders, it is undeniable that a conversation about the appropriateness of the day is needed. Is it really okay to lie to people, to gaslight them and to cause them stress? 
I honestly can't say that it is. Especially when you consider people like myself who have autism. And some people will say, well there's no harm in it. I immediately told them that it was just a prank, bro. Which, okay, let's look at it this way. Sometimes I might have a nightmare, a really scary one, and I wake up scared, anxious, with adrenaline rushing through my body. The fact that the dream never happened doesn't stop these biological responses from happening. If you jump scare someone or tell them something that is going to cause them stress and anxiety, no matter whether or not it's true, their body is going to react as though it is. I feel it important to just mention that a lot of this is on a case-by-case -case basis. If you personally know a friend who you are certain will respond positively to a prank like this, then have at it. But if it's a stranger or someone who you don't know what their reaction is really going to be, I would strongly recommend that you reconsider. I feel it important that we also show these positive responses I got before we make any final conclusions. I don't tend to prank people myself, but I really enjoy the day when the newspapers or the television run some random fool's prank. Sales of left-handed screwdrivers have peaked this spring. Just silly stuff like that. I love April Fools, but I also take my pranks very seriously. A good prank is one that everybody laughs at when it's finished. My least favourite kind of prank is what I like to call a blue dog prank. It's basically convincing someone of something that is patently untrue and then pulling the rug out from under them. Not only is it often mean-spirited, stuff like prank coming out or pregnancy announcements are just often not funny and are hurtful to a lot of folks. If blue dog pranks were banned on April Fools, I think people would enjoy it a lot more. These last two testimonials are, I think, the key to understanding the good aspects of April Fool's Day. The parts of it that I believe are worth celebrating. April Fool's pranks should be, above all else, harmless and should make everyone involved laugh. Or at worst, just roll their eyes. The last responder actually included a video of what she believes was a good example of an April Fool's gag, and described it as an excellent prank which injects harmless silliness into everyday life. The video features a man standing inside of an elevator who pranks the unsuspecting members of the public by pulling down a map and doing a weather forecast. You're going up? All right. So is the barometric pressure. Let's look at the activator forecast. Now, we've got some high pressure moving its way toward the east. Look at those reactions. Smiles. Laughter. Joy. That is what this day should be about. Unfortunately, it's not the version of the holiday that most people get to experience. And now I have to ask a really difficult question. Does April Fool's Day even work anymore? Back in the day, pranks, hoaxes and jokeses occurred completely within April the 1st. A TV broadcast, a newspaper column, a joke or prank you pulled in person. Once April 2nd rolls around, it's gone and you can't be tricked by it anymore. But in the internet age, that is simply not the case. Joke articles can stay in your newsfeed and be shown to you days later, as can videos in your recommended section on YouTube. It's common for people to complain about still getting got by April Fool's jokes for days after the actual event. Not to mention that with the advent of things like The Onion, Kayfabe News and that unfunny right-wing one, satire or funny news articles have somewhat lost their novelty. Now I'm definitely not of the opinion that we should get rid of April Fool's Day, I don't even know how you would do that, well, but I don't think we should try. Yes, there is a lot wrong with how it's celebrated today, whether it's the unintentional anxiety, the opportunity that people use it to bully people, or the spread of harmful misinformation, I still believe that there is, at its core, a wonderful idea. I don't know how we can change the manner in which a holiday is celebrated, and I know for a fact that we can't undo the damage that's already been done, but I hope that moving forward we can strive to make the day better, to make it what it's supposed to be. A day to be an April Fool, to spread laughter and joy to everyone around you. We don't need to gaslight, lie, or spread harmful misinformation. There are plenty of ways to celebrate. Telling jokes, wearing a funny outfit for the day. 
going to see a comedy show. I don't know, stick googly eyes on stuff. That seems to work. Be creative, not mean-spirited. Thank you everybody for watching this video. I hope you all had a fun April 1st, or at least a stress-free one. I've been Tizzy Top the Clown, you just got learned, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!